heading over to our local farm store this morning to go pick up some chicken feed. We don't actually have the chickens yet, but I'd like to develop a little feeder that we can remotely control for when we're out of town. I know you guys are probably thinking, well, why not just have a neighbor come over and feed your chickens? It, it can be a bit of a burden if I have to ask somebody on a regular basis. So I'd like to come up with a way that we can do this using an app or using a web browser, something that will also let us know that it was actually done. And I think this can be pretty easily solved using an Arduino that's connected to LTE or Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna show you guys what I have in mind in the lab in a minute here. Let me run in and grab the food and I'll meet you guys back in the lab. Okay, so here's the chicken feed. I actually opened up one of the bags already to see what it looks like on the inside, because it's not what I was expecting. I was actually expecting something more like, um, like a blended up or ground up corn kernel, which would be harder than what this is. And this may pose a little bit of a problem in some humid weather, and I'll show you why I think that in a minute here. So this is kind of like the consistency of dried oatmeal, but smaller pieces. See what I mean? It's, um, it's meant for egg laying chickens, which is what we have, or what we're gonna have our chickens for. So this will be the mix that we'll be using more than likely. So whatever I come up with here has to work for this type of feed, but it would be great if it worked with other types of feed too, just in case we mix it up. I don't know, maybe different manufacturers feed looks and feels and acts differently in the feeder. But anyway, to give you an idea, this is what we're dealing with. It's little pellets, probably nothing bigger than a, an eighth inch maybe in diameter here. And there is some crushed corn in here too. But um, anyway, this type of feed can be problematic when it gets humid. If it's really wet outside, or even a drop of water, I mean a couple drops of water in here could cause it to clump up. And that might be problematic for what I'm planning on doing for the feeder. So let me show you what I have in mind for how I'd like this to work. So I was in Costco a few months ago and I was looking at the Traeger uh, smokers for smoking meats. And on the side of a smoker, there's like a big bin that you put the, uh, the wood chips in or the wood pellets. And there's a corkscrew that turns really slowly on a thermostat to feed those pellets into the, the hot part of the smoker so that they catch fire and burn. I guess they kind of just smoke, they don't actually catch fire. And so I ordered a replacement part for one of those triggers, even though I don't have a, a smoker, I ordered the part from that smoker for this project. I think this will be perfect. So this is actually pretty long. I guess it's uh, about 20 some inches long. Longer than we need for this, but I didn't want to get one that was too short because most of what I found were like, you know, six or eight inches long and that wouldn't be long enough for what I'm thinking is, is a good way to do this. So this is the shaft and on the end of the shaft here, it came with, it didn't come with this screw. It had a pin in here that goes straight through the shaft and that pin is probably to connect it to the Traeger somehow. I'm sure that's what it's for, but um, I don't, that really won't work in my application because the shaft that I need to connect this to is on a gear motor, which I have here. Now on this gear motor, we have a 5 16 shaft that has a flat side on it. So what I need is a way to, um, to lock this so that it would rotate with the motor. And so what I did was I ended up tapping this with a five millimeter tap. So I tapped the hole, threaded it, and I have a five millimeter screw here. I actually have some five millimeter uh, little posts that'll go in here. So it won't be this giant screw sticking out. And that should, that should give us the ability to lock this baby down to the, um, to the shaft on the motor so that the corkscrew spins when the motor turns. So let me get an Allen key and get this puppy tightened down. All right, so there's the motor, got the shaft, so it's locked to the motor so that when the motor spins, the corkscrew should spin and that should push out the corn or the feed. So in order to do that, I'm thinking that if I take a piece of stainless steel tubing and run it in the bottom of a container, perhaps a, a metal trash can or like a feed container because they're usually made out of metal, that should work. Now, um, the reason I decided to go with stainless steel is you could use a plastic pipe for this, but what I'm worried about is that this corkscrew constantly turning could scrape some of that plastic off and you can end up with plastic in your food, which you don't want. You don't want your animals eating plastic. So what I did was we actually live close enough to a metal, um, it's like a metal store. It's acres of just metal, any kind of metal you need. And I picked up this stainless steel pipe, chopped out a little opening here, with a Dremel and a, uh, a bandsaw. Cut it to the appropriate length. Now this is only a test and I just stabbed myself. That really hurt actually. Um, be careful about those metal shards. So this is a, um, this is just a test. I wanna see if, if the feed will work in a setup like this. Now obviously you'd wanna take any metal shards out of here before you actually go ahead and use it for feed because you don't wanna hurt anybody, any of your chickens. So, um, what I did was I measured it up. I brought the corkscrew with me to the store, made sure that it fits this tubing, and it does. It fits nicely. And what I'd like to do is install this in the bottom of a container so that the feed, gravity would pull the feed to the bottom. 
the corkscrew spins, have a hole in either side of the container, and the theory here is that the feed should come out of the open end of this pipe. And then once the feed comes out, there should be, you know, the corkscrew is in there, there'll be a little extra feed just here on the open end, uh, you know, when once the feed is done pushing, and maybe the chickens will peck some of it out of there and that's fine. I may even come up with a little cap that goes on here or maybe a little elbow. Before I go any farther, I do want to mention that this is just the hardware portion of what we're doing here. I still have to develop all the software for it, and I'll take you guys along for that. And I'm kind of up in the air as to what I want to do with that. So if you have any input, let me know in the comments below what you think I should do there. Um, but this is um, the hardware that I think will work well for this application. All right, so the next thing we have to do is figure out what direction this motor is going to turn. And what's nice about a DC motor is that we can just reverse the polarity if it's going the wrong way. So we want to make sure that the corn is going out toward the end of the tube and not back here toward the motor because that would be, uh, that would be bad. It would be compressing it and just basically fall apart. So what we want to do is rotate it so that the corn or the feed pushes out toward the end of the bucket. So to do that, I'm just going to connect it to this power supply. Eventually it'll be hooked up to a big battery so that this will even work when there's no power. So let me get this baby plugged in and wired up and we'll see what happens. All right, so this is a 12 volt motor. I'm just gonna set my power supply to 12 volts, make sure that this is um, actually gonna even turn. I haven't even tested this motor yet. Okay, so it is. And it's going the wrong way. So we're just gonna reverse polarity and that screw should turn the right way. And there we go. So. That should do the trick. Now, one of the things I'm worried about is there's a little burr right here on the metal. I'm worried about it pushing the pipe. I, I think this will work. I think this is gonna work quite well, actually. For the container, I might have mentioned this already, but what I'd like to use is a metal container. For now, I'm just gonna try it with a plastic bucket because if this whole thing doesn't work, I don't wanna invest in some metal can that's not gonna work out. I already, this is basically all parts that I already had laying around for the most part. Um, but what I've got here is just a five gallon bucket and I drilled holes in either side of it that are about the same size as the metal pipe. It's actually a little bit bigger so we can caulk it if the thing starts to fall out. Like I said, this is just a test. Now, one thing that I do realize that I made a mistake here, when I cut this, I should have cut this um, a little bit closer to the motor because when I mount this motor on the side of the bucket, you can see that the opening is actually past the bucket. And that's not what we want. So we want this going like this. And for testing sake, we'll just leave the motor outside, of, you know, far away from the bucket. But when it's a finished product, the motor will be mounted right on the side of the can, just like that. But you see what I mean? I cut the hole in the wrong place, and so the, um, the opening is sticking out of the side. So for today, just to test this out and see if this dispenses properly, we're gonna put this right there. Now, before I go any farther, I think we're at a point where it would be nice to just test it and see if it dispenses, because really, if this works, the rest is a little bit of uh, hardware and some software, and I think we're going to be in business. Okay, one thing I just learned is that there was a ton of... Wow, that's really weird. On camera, these are showing up as red, at least on my screen here, but they're not red at all. There's no red in here whatsoever. So if you're seeing red, I don't know why that is. Anyway, it just made a ton of dust when I did that. Okay, so here's what I've got. I've got the motor. I've got the shaft inside the, the post here, inside the pipe. The stainless steel tube, the cut part is on the inside of the bucket. It comes out the other side of the bucket. Now, in theory, when I power this up, grain should come out of this side. Um, what we're gonna do, though, before we do that, is I'd like to tie in a little remote control so that I can push a button and have a way to stop it uh, when that happens. So let me get this wired up really quickly and I'll show you guys the test. We'll see what happens, it's the moment of truth. Okay, so what I've done here is I have taped the motor down to the table because it's gonna wanna push, you know, the shaft is gonna be pushing this way and pushing feet out that way. I've also taped the motor, you know, I taped the motor to the shaft, I taped the shaft down to the table. Nothing should pull apart. There's quite a bit of weight in here from the feed, so I don't think the bucket's gonna go anywhere. I've got my power supply set to 12 volts. I've got it hooked up to this little relay board. Now let me talk about this real quick. So this is really the what makes this so awesome is that this is a receiver that can receive from a local remote control like this guy right here, which is really cool. So, I mean, it has eight buttons. I might say like button one gives one unit of food, button two gives two and so forth. Maybe one unit is what the chickens eat when they're babies and then maybe eight is what they eat when they're adults. I don't know, maybe one of them turns on the water, we'll see. This is a receiver board on the top here. This little piggyback is a receiver. Underneath here is a Photon um, Arduino. Let's see if I can get a shot of this in here. This focus is not exactly the best right now. I don't know what's going on here. Let me see if I can get this to 
focus, there we go. So you can see this is kind of layered. The top with the antenna is the receiver for that, for this remote control right here. Underneath is a Wi-Fi module, that's the particle photon. It's an Arduino that you flash over the air, you guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my other videos. If you do know, then you already are familiar with this. And then coming out of here is the Wi-Fi antenna for that. So what's cool about this is when I push the button on this remote, that's, that's that signal from the remote is going into the photon, into the Arduino, and then the Arduino is controlling one of the relays. And right now it's controlling relay two. Don't ask me why. I have it set up so that button one does relay two. So now, as I push it, you can see it's working. The motor turns. The shaft is, nothing seems to be moving. So the grain should be going through the shaft. I also marked over here where the top is because the shaft, the metal will want to spin because I haven't caulked it, I haven't screwed it on. The finished product, it will be screwed on. And then here's the end of that corkscrew in here. So if I just hold this down, you'll see it rotating. And now after a few of these rotations, we should start to get some feed. All right, starting to see it now. This is actually perfect because we it's coming out slow enough that we can set units here and we can say, okay, rotate 10 seconds or 30 seconds for different amounts. Now I'm gonna have to get something to catch this so it doesn't go all over the place. So I'll just use this bin right here. That's kind of the perfect dispenser for chicken food right there. Um, because like I said, I could set this for 30 seconds and it'll give me 30 units of food or whatever. I can decide maybe, maybe 30 seconds is one unit. So you can design the software to give you the right amount of food depending on how old the chickens are or how many chickens you have. And then when you let go of the remote, the food stops. And because this is tied into this Arduino here, what that means is that we'll be able to um, control it over Wi-Fi, over software, because really what's happening right now is when I push this remote, the remote's not talking to the relay, the remote's talking to the Arduino, the Arduino's talking to the relay. And because this is a, it's a photon, I just flashed new, new software in it five minutes ago over Wi-Fi, the little, breathing blue LED in there lets you know that we're connected to the to the Wi-Fi. I'm really confused about where the red's coming from on this camera. I don't know if you guys are picking that up, but this camera is seeing red and there's no red in this room. So I don't know why that's happening. Hopefully my camera's not going bad on me. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to check the hardware out, make sure I was going the right route with it. We're gonna maybe we're gonna have to deal with this. You see how you get these little cavities? In here, I'm gonna run this a few times and see if we get that, if that happens a lot, you know, because as you go, it kind of creates a hole. What I'm worried about is that it'll create a hole and the bucket will still be almost full of feed and that could be a problem. All right, so that's all I wanted to do today was kind of just vet the hardware, make sure that the process, make sure the theory was good here, that the grain will fall in. I'm gonna run this a few times and see if we end up with those cavities in the middle where we end up with the hollow spot and see if we have to come up with some kind of a vibrator to shake this container after a certain amount of time or something to knock it. I'm also gonna do some experiments with the moisture, make sure we don't have any moisture problems and have it clump up. But that's all I wanted to do today in this video was kind of check the hardware out with you guys. Let me know if you like that concept, actually finding my way through it while I'm here on video. Normally I don't do that. Normally I would have the whole thing figured out and show you my finished product, but maybe this is something you like. If it's not, let me know. Either way, hit that subscribe button because I plan on coming back to do some follow-ups here on the software that we're gonna use to make this thing talk. I'm not sure if the software is gonna live inside the Arduino itself. Some of it will. I'm not sure if we're gonna end up with a, a web page on the Arduino or a web page on a server and the Arduino checks in with it. Uh, maybe I'll have the option for a real-time clock in here so that it automatically feeds them at a certain time each day in case you're on a, a cruise and you can't connect because there's no way to connect online. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But like I said, I'm going to do some follow-up videos on this project once I get the hardware kind of ironed out a little bit more and I've learned a, bit, a little bit more about the feed. And I'm also going to try a couple other types of feed to make sure they don't jam in that corkscrew on the way out. Anyhow, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you have any suggestions. Let me know what they are. I may even make this work on LTE. That is kind of one of the plans I have is to have a version that's cellular and also a version that's Wi-Fi. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Watch. Wow, look at that. You're feeding the chickies.